my success in what I read, what I put in myself, equals the success of my business. Welcome to Diamond Nation. Salem here with my co-host, Sal. Welcome you guys to another edition of Africa's Diamonds podcast, uh, where we have conversations with Africa's change makers, some movers. And uh, as always, I have a great friend for a long time, Sal, to present you guys who's going to be our change maker for the day. Hey, guys. Really good to be with you. And as I always say, I am excited. I'm sure you guys are like, you're always excited. Well, I am always excited because we get to talk to <laughs> amazing men and women who are creating change on the continent of Africa. And today, I got to set the stage for you. Uh, we all know, if you've been around African startup scene at all, you understand that mobile is changing everything for Africa. People are searching the web on their mobile phones more than they're doing anywhere else. They have access to the internet now. It's at their fingertips. And you wonder, what can we develop on the mobile device for our people in Africa that actually helps them experience the world better, you know, improves their shopping experience, right? Well, our founder today, our change maker today is Kennedy Nyaga. And he is spearheading this movement. He's from Kenya, but I believe it's an Africa-wide movement to, to really help us as Africans have a better experience on mobile. So Kennedy, we are so excited to have you. What's new in your world? What, what you up to? Hey, hey, I'm also excited to be here today. Um, um, I'm really excited to be talking about what we in Kenya or across Africa, what we are doing to change the lives of uh, Kenyans and Africans uh, in general and provide them, you know, quality services. That's great. That's, that's great. So let's jump right in. All right. I'm going to take you back memory lane a little bit. So uh, Diamond Nation, we always do a pre-interview to get to know our founders well before we talk to them and, and, and yeah. have conversations with them. And Kennedy, in, in your pre-interview process, you talked about your biggest failure. We're going to start there because you're having a lot of success, but we're going to start there. Your biggest failure. Tell us what that was and what that means to you. I think Diamond Nation wants to hear this. Okay. Um, so I started a business right after I finished my campus. And um, it was very interesting um, time uh, in my life because I was very interested in just going out there and impacting uh, the society. So in my first business, uh, it was Honored Interactive. In, in my view, I, I, my biggest failure was starting the business without any passion, without any real passion in what I was doing. So basically what I did, I was, I was the brains of the business and I, and I got co-founders who could be able to do uh, the business. The business itself was, to helping, uh, was helping SMEs uh, scale their digital marketing by helping them do Facebook posts and tweeting. Uh, Twitter is actually very big here in Kenya. And uh, I am not really uh, a Twitter fan, nor am I a Facebook uh, creative. I'm not that creative. So eventually what happened was um, the business just started suffering because I never really understood this business. So mm. my biggest failure in life, I would say, was venturing into a business without the core element, which is passion. Mm. That's interesting. So you started Owned Cree Interactive and you guys were providing these services for small businesses and, and I, I just have this follow-up because I was talking to Salem about this earlier. Why didn't you, like most people do, why didn't you just hire out? Why didn't you just get uh, some freelancers out there, some, you know, get some contractors who are creative, who can do this stuff, and then you would have a very successful, you know, uh, SME services business. Why didn't you do that? Why did you choose to shut it down? So um, the, the business itself was somewhat successful because um, we ended up working with something like 20 small merchants who will pay us uh, to the tunes of 3,000 Kenyan shillings per month um, just for us to do the, the, wow. the, the for them that. Yeah, but the crazy thing was um, I was not interested. Therefore, in the morning, I'll wake up and uh, think about other things. And then perhaps that, that will come as a fluke. Yeah, right? So... Um, I, I was not invested myself. I was not, not properly invested in this business. So eventually, um, my co-founders started detecting um, this 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 lack of interest, 
and eventually um, they started having ideas about moving to other places. So I, I clearly just gave someone else the business and left. So I somewhat I, I just took the customers, gave them someone else, and I and I ventured into something else that uh, uh, I I believe I love. But that was a lesson learned. Uh, that's a really bold move, and I think we got to stay on this for a little bit because you, you're saying a lot of things that I, a lot of our audience, Diamond Nation, they have passion for certain things, but they feel like those things are unreachable, right? And so they settle mm-hmm. for what will make money right now. So, because frankly, you're in business, you should be making money, and but you had yes. a working business, you were making money, and because yes. you didn't have passion, you gave that away. Now what? causes an entrepreneur to come to that decision. I understand the passion thing, but it's got to be something deeper here. Uh, what is that thing? What is that thing that is beyond making money for you? That causes you to let go of something that is actually generating revenue. Uh, the one thing that you'll discover in any entrepreneur, I'll tell you, is the, the money Money is the least uh, object that they're looking for. Uh, most entrepreneurs are builders and money to them is just as a result of what they do. And uh, eventually when I, when I sat down, I felt like internally I was suffering, right? Uh, because I had all this money, but I was not free to do what I was doing. So eventually also the business suffers and also my clients complain a lot mm-hmm. because, you know, they, they feel that uh, we agreed on one thing, but it's now taking ages to complete. And uh, I mean, th- that is just so wrong. So nothing in life comes by luck. Everything mm. in life is planned, you know. Right. Um, it's You have to be prepared to be at that position for you to, for, for, for that opportunity to pass by and you grab it. Hmm. And uh, at at Honored, I felt that really we were not preparing ourselves for anything. Yeah. So I I eventually decided no. I am I have wasted enough time. Um, I'm really young. If I continue pursuing this for the next five years, you know, uh, I'll be out. I'll be out from the young entrepreneur entrepreneurship scene. I'll be now <laughs> what the the older generation. <laughs> <laughs> You'll no longer be young. Uh, well, I'll no longer be young. Kennedy, so. you know something that um, uh, I can't quite get my, my my head around here. I want you to clarify a little bit. Is is it that you had the passion? going into this venture and that you lost the passion or is it that you quite weren't sure because like for example you talked about you know not servicing some of the clients the way you had promised or the way you first started to do it and started taking longer and things like that so my question is was this one of those ventures where it sounded just like a good idea and you went with some friends or was this something that you were first passionate about and then you found something else that you're passionate about like for example help other Diamond Nation, okay, who are in similar situations, you know, what's the difference? Like, did you start out with passion and lost it? Or did you just go into something because it was a good idea to make money or you weren't up with friends? Like, what was the initial desire, the initial push going into this specific venture? So uh, when we started off, to some of those things, you know, you, you talk with friends and it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, apart from that, uh, being young, everybody here expects that you understand, okay, I, I'm also a techie. Mm-hmm. I'm a techie. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hardcore programmer. So okay. apart from everybody believing that you can fix their laptops and phones, they also <laughs> believe that you can tweet and Facebook. Right. So <laughs> everyone around me was throwing the cash. They were like, yeah you should handle our social media, you know? <laughs> so everyone was like, yeah. So it was, it sounded like a good business idea. But then eventually um, it, the realization comes, uh, you're a techie, uh, like most techies, you just prefer coding in the back room. But as uh, people kind of say, they say, I'm a very interesting techie. I like, uh, I just see a problem. I attack it. <laughs> And uh, and I think that's that's what led to my first failure. Uh, I saw a problem and I attacked it, <laughs> mm. literally. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. You talked about uh, being a so you attacked a problem because you had the skills to build, right? Yes. And you just went for it and built, right? Yeah. But but frankly, isn't that an advantage, or is that a disadvantage? It can be somewhat of a disadvantage because. 
um, th- there needs to be something that keeps on fueling you. So you, you, can, you can come up with the best design of um, an aeroplane, but as long as not, nothing is fueling you, you'll never improve on it. You'll always be looking for something else. And once that dies, it's dead, right? It's short-lived, and uh, as they say, money comes, money goes. And with that, the, the business goes with it, and you end up just suffering. Did you, would you, Kennedy, would you consider this as one of your biggest, I guess, in terms of business failure, um, something that did not work? Or, and also, if it was a failure, what is one thing that you learned from that that you took on onto your next venture? So, in, in my, as I say, Kenya again is one of the hardest countries to do business. But okay. thanks to that business, I, I managed to learn how to do some, you know, simple things, how to register a business, how mm. to get a city council mm. permit, how to talk to, 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 to guys, especially businesses. And from that business itself, I got to learn some amazing things. Um, um, like, Yes, they, they came to me and they, they, they would ask me to do their social media. I would approach some of them and they'll ask me to do their social media. But they were not getting the satisfaction that social media brings along. And uh, so eventually I sat down and uh, together with my co-founders, who we were with uh, initially in, an, in a previous business, actually, uh, that uh, we also sold off. Um, we sat down and we came up with this idea of helping merchants convert their dead stock into a marketing tool, uh, a marketing budget that you'll say, uh, because most businesses here in Kenya do not actually budget for any marketing. Mm. Uh, they just open shop and expect people will, will walk in. So we, but we noticed the most amazing thing is that they have all this dead stock. For example, a bakery made cake in the morning by six, the, the cake that they made will be expiring tomorrow morning. So they either have to throw it out, right? Right, right. Or uh, give it at a discount. So we thought, why not help them take this cake that they made in excess and uh, give it at a discount and get, you know, use that as a marketing budget. To get and, more customers. And that's the solution. Yes. So if you came at six and bought the cake at a discount, then tomorrow you'll now know that this business exists and it makes really wonderful cakes. Wow. Well, and, and this is interesting that you say that because something that we also are trying to learn as our podcast is growing, going to different parts of Africa, is that, like you said, social media is very vital to the continent, right? Uh, something that yes. uh, many Africans seem to be embracing very much, you know, like many places around the world. Um, Something that you said is that why isn't or are more African traditional business owners looking at the social media as a viable mean for marketing? Is it because it's due to like structure problems? Like, for example, (laughs) you don't have electricity in many areas. So somebody that may not even have a Twitter or Facebook account or if you have an account, they, they check it very rarely. Like you, somebody who in Kenya, for example, can you give us some more of a local market analysis of why would most traditional business owners now look into social media as a mean for, you know, marketing and expanding their business? Actually, um, just to clarify, uh, most businesses here in Kenya are relying on social media. They are. For okay. business. Okay. They are. Like, you go onto Facebook and you find numerous groups from Soko Ku, Soko Nyeupe. Uh, Soko means market. Okay. Uh, school means big. Uh, so very many businesses are actually using the, uh, Facebook as a platform to scale their businesses. Gotcha. Uh, one business will be Popping here in Kenya. Uh, they have managed to actually build a, a following on Facebook and they started mm-hmm. off by just selling stuff on Facebook. However, Facebook is, um, is, a, is a Western-based uh concept, right? Right, right. And every time they are doing all these tweaks, to fit a market, you know, the, the American market. So they discover, oh, people don't want to see these set, sort of ads. They remove them. Oh, and uh, okay. eventually you find businesses here in Kenya accumulated so many likes that become worthless. Mm. Right? Mm. So they, they are venturing into social media to try to connect these businesses. But eventually Facebook 
does something and loses them you know <laughs> it's a game out, out there mm, that's wow. true actually businesses uh, where i live in the united states businesses face that problem too there is uh, a lot of uh, study going into the algorithms and stuff that social media networks are using these days but you're right mm -hmm. I mean, you start something it's working for you you accumulate all these likes and you can't yeah. target them anymore because they changed the algorithm and so you post something and it, it's not it's not getting through it's true yeah and you brought up something interesting Kennedy about mm -hmm. uh, about the fact that Facebook was built for Western market you know, our yes. passion here, Af Africa's diamonds, and, and when we refer to Diamond Nation, our real passion here with profiling founders like yourself and change makers like yourself is to show what is happening on the continent for the continent. Not that we are loyalists to Africa, we are, but not that we think everyone else is useless or whatever. We just feel like Africans need to be building stuff for Africans. And you yeah. have a mindset that goes beyond your education. You have a mindset that goes beyond uh, the fact that you're a programmer and a, a developer. Where did that mindset come from? How did that start? Because I think it will feed into some of what's missing in our African entrepreneurial minds. We don't tap back into what I'm, I'm mm -hmm. guessing is a childhood memory and upbringing. So can you get into that a little bit? How did you form your thoughts around entrepreneurship and how you approach it? Because you're unique in the way you're doing things and you have an understanding deeper than most. <laughs> so um, to begin with, uh, my father was a, is a doctor and my mother is an accountant, is a former accountant and she used to work for Total Kenya. And so for so many years, um, the path that they would push me was either to become a doctor like my father or to become an accountant like my mother. Mm. So, so much that I ended up having an ACCA certificate. I am an accountant with ACCA because my mother really wanted me to become an accountant. But when I was studying at Strathmore University, I had, uh, I, I remembered that when I was a kid, I would love to, to destroy things and then put them back together. And uh, during one talk at the university, uh, one one person said that your future has already been determined. You, all you have to do is just look at your past and you will see all, all things that connect to where you are today. And sitting in that class, I, I discovered a computer. I, actually, in, in that conference, my friend was using a computer and I discovered Mark Zuckerberg and uh, the story of how he built the first social network from his dorm room mm -hmm. uh, and all the things that he had built using his computer. And I looked at the computer no longer as this uh, medium of connection, but rather a tool that they can build, you know, web platforms, uh, build things for, for guys and stuff. And I started looking into it. So one year later, uh, and what I was I was believing was I'm going to become a very good computer programmer and I'm going to work uh, perhaps at Google or Facebook, right? But one year later, my mother quits her job and she's like, I'm tired of this job. I'm going to look for something I'm passionate about doing. And she started a company called Tofina Rom. And what Tofina Rom is, it helps, um, it helps people in the middle income come together and build apartments. So if a house that you would have bought for 18 million Kenyan shillings, you buy for something like 11, you get to build for something like 11 million Kenyan shillings. And it was at that moment that I realized that I can also build something, that I can take what I'm learning and build a business out of it. Mm. And around me, this became, you know, it, it just starts sticking. Uh, it just starts sticking. Um, you, 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 look, you look at things and you see opportunities. I mean, once that hits you, you know, once entrepreneurship hits you, you look at everything around you and you see how you can make it better, right? But the biggest right. problem is most entrepreneurs don't know how to differentiate what, what they don't know how to differentiate um, things and come up with what they can do best. Mm. Right. So most entrepreneurs, once it hits them, they're like, oh, my God, I'd like to become as good as um, uh, as uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Nigerian. 
or Mark Zuckerberg, right? right? I like to become as good as Mark Zuckerberg. Right. What is it I can grab next to me that will make me my millions? And you <laughs> right. just take it and run with it, and uh, you get lost, mm. right? And that's why you see there are all these, for example, social networks, uh, as you are saying, that come around uh, out of Africa but don't get to survive right. because they try to build something like Mark Zuckerberg did. Right, so they saw an opportunity, but they try to twist it and hit it and and carve it to look like Facebook. Right, right. right. Have the tools like Facebook, and that never scales. It's not very mm. unique. It's not very. Um, how can I put this? Organic to the continent. Yes. Hmm. You know, I think that's a uh, interesting. I think on the point inside Diamond Nation, take notes. That that is going to save you a world of hurt and years and years of iteration if you just listen to that insight right there you've got to build with the culture in mind you can't build for right. people who live a certain yes. way and and copy somebody else you can get inspiration like kennedy's talking about but you can't mm -hmm. build for a different culture when you're living somewhere else that's just on the point it's salem and i have been discussing that mm -hmm. and trying to understand that around what we're working on too so kennedy Let's get into mobile. Yeah. I'm excited to talk even more about this. Now that we understand uh -huh. a base of where your thinking is coming from, right. how did you apply that to founding mobile? You gave us a founding story of the product idea, how it came about, but you have a different understanding. How, how did that turn into mobile and the success you're seeing right now? So um, what, what happens is um, eventually, be, actually in, here in Kenya, and I think across the world, most people wake up and the first thing that they look at is their mobile phone. Exactly. And, uh, and here in Kenya, we have lots, lots and lots and lots of mobile phones. And many of them are shifting from being feature phones into smartphones, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, apart from that, what many people don't know is that here in Kenya, malls are mushrooming from left right you know everywhere you go there's a new mall and like uh, the mall. other problem shopping malls yeah okay. they're just they're just mushrooming um uh, the, the economy opened up mm. and uh the, the emerging middle class started growing right right and all these people the, the businesses are looking for product awareness they're looking they're looking to be known and they do not have a budget for that, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, this emerging middle class is actually desperate for discovery. They, they want on a weekend to go somewhere and enjoy uh, meat, what we call here Nyamachoma, or they would like to go to, to the mall and buy some stuff. So we thought, why don't we help uh, businesses cancel out, right? So... It is a problem. Over 60% of new businesses that open here in Kenya die every year, right? So whether you're in a big shopping mall or you're in a small stall in town, right. there is a very there is a chance of um, six out of ten you will be shutting down that year. Mm. So wow. we want to change. We want to change that. We want to help businesses live beyond their third year right. because when they do live beyond their third year then that means there's more food on the table the economy grows faster so we want to tackle that and even if we are going to be pinching just just a small pinch um, into that statistics and perhaps reduce it to a chance of five out of ten then we will have made a very big impact in the economy okay well well kennedy um it was actually interesting that you talked about, like you said, I think you said, did you say six out of 10 don't make it past their third year or make it to their third yeah. year, right? So for example, yeah. uh, how long how, how long have you guys been in business? So we have been in business since last year, October. Since like sure, October. Um, yes. Um, so the first concept that we came up with was uh, something like Groupon. Okay. And then we thought we could be able to take all these items and list them on Groupon. And mm -hmm. again, uh, we started with our own. We started with our mistakes by copying the Western world and trying to fit it into our into mobile. <laughs> right, right, right. But as we grew, we we discovered some things. Um, Kenyans have a camera on their mobile phone. Mm -hmm. um, people who like to discover don't, are not looking for the best of the best of pictures. Apart from that, 
Kenyans love 140. I think 140 characters was made for Kenyans. Or I don't know if it's across <laughs> Africa. They, they don't like writing anything <laughs> beyond, you know, 140 characters. It's they, great insight. Right. Yeah, if I, if I cannot push it by pushing, getting someone to write anything past 140 characters is just stressing them. <laughs> so we went back and we redrew the whole business again into what we currently have. And so what Mobu is, Mobu is a, a magazine, a discount magazine, where the discounts are our stories. And these stories are curated by the current physical location, right? And their bio data that they provide us on sign up. So instead of a, instead of a merchant just disposing for example, a merchant disposing her dresses, she's able to target ladies who are most likely to come back, right? Mm-hmm. So she did not just give anyone. She said, I want the ladies in a 100-mile radius from where my business is to know about my discount so that they come into my shop and then I can sell to them this dress and they'll have known about me. And so that's how, I mean, we started running off with mobile. That's interesting. Now, I think just for understanding, maybe more for me than most people here, but how do you get that data? How are so, you able to actually do that for the, the, the customer? So um, the, 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 the guys who have our magazine, who we will call the customers, the merchants' customers, uh-huh. they can... Uh, they can log in via Facebook. Okay, we thank Facebook very much because, you know, they have already done the curation. And on a right. click of a button, the, the user has given us that data. Apart from that, we also provide them the option of providing that data. They give us their name, mm. they give us their gender, they give us their age. And from that, we, we promise them uh, on the other side that we will give them absolute discovery that is tailored for them, that is personal and tailored for them. That's a beautiful concept. I'm in love with the product. I wish I was in Kenya right now. Right. I think, <laughs> I think that I think this is a very great product for people to be able to find stuff locally. That yes. is also tailored to them. Right? Exactly. It's not just a local ad popping up. I, I'm a, I use Groupon quite a bit. And frankly, half the stuff they send me, I would never buy. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. okay, this is nice. You know, and I'd start deleting the emails. It's just the reality. No, no hating on Groupon. I've bought stuff from them. But yeah, yeah no, I think you've, you've, you've discovered something pretty huge. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So right now, what we are, we're very interested in, um, we are looking for guys um, who are interested in also starting something like this in their country. Um, send me an email at kennedy at mobile.co.ke. Um, we can work with you and see how we can pilot, especially across Africa, and how you can become our 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 contact in your country, right? Uh, we are also very interested um, in in mentorship. Um, if there are any guys out there who have skills, um, kindly email us and let's keep in contact. Let's be email pals. What's that email address again? Say that again for Diamond Nation. Kennedy. Mm-hmm. at mobu.co.ke All right, Diamond Nation, this is your chance. You got to grab that email. We're going to have it in the show notes and uh, the podcast notes, but this is your chance. So I, I we've got a few more questions for you. This is so good. We got to dive a little deeper here. Exactly, okay? exactly. So how did you start? One of the big problems when we talk to founders in Africa and change makers, people wanting to be founders, they always talk about funding. They always mm-hmm. talk about money and how they don't have money and creative ways to get money. How did you guys get the funding for mobile? Did you need any funding? What did you do in your start? So, your so what what most businesses don't do is bake their revenue model within what they are building. So from the word go, we were aware that money will be a problem to us, right? So we we decided to build everything as lean as possible. So every person who joined the mobile team had to have skills to be able to take us a distance to a distance. Uh, so we 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 will give you equity in exchange 
for bringing your skills on board. And so like one guy, Joel from Mall Culture, um, we approached him and we told him, look, Joel, um, you're working with all these balls and, and you'd like the, the, the business on our platform. Mm-hmm. And uh, we agreed that he takes equity from our company and immediately we got access to over 60 merchants at once who, 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 who are trying our product. Mm. So for most businesses, they have to think about how to eliminate the need for um, funding from the wide go. So they, they, they need to work around that elimination from the word go. Otherwise, um, once an investor says, I, I can't give you that money, then you will close down. Uh, and I think um, there are guys, for example, what many people don't know is before Facebook got its first funding, they went around leveraging their skills um, to these campuses and promising um, Facebook in those campuses in exchange for them having an article on, their, on the campus uh, magazine. And right. that's how they, 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 they got to grow. Got to grow. And by the time the, the first investor came on board, they were so valuable that basically they were worth it. Hmm. And I mean, I, I first want to say, man, the, the, it's just a great idea that you brought up in terms of funding and financing is starting business. I think that's just uh, something that Diamond Nation should definitely take notes on. I mean, there's a lot of things to gold nuggets, like I, talk, I call them gold nuggets that uh, Diamond Nation can definitely benefit from. And uh, you talked about, as you guys are growing up, you're, you guys have been around for about a year and a half, two years now. Um, what type of revenues have you guys seen in, in terms of your market success, in terms of uh, how your merchant doing, how are the customers? Um, uh, what kind of success have you had in terms of, if you can talk in terms of revenues, if, what type of numbers have you guys seen in the past year and a half? Um, so I won't go into the specific of the revenues um, mm. because we are still building. But um, so far, we have not charged the small merchants yet. But the amazing thing is um, the sum of the large retailers, furniture stores, when they see what we are doing with the small merchants, mm-hmm. they come and they give, they, they pay for a really, a, a like uh, a sponsor. They have actually crafted a whole new segment we didn't know would exist. So on top of our application, we have a, a section that is sponsored. And so they are paying for that section much more than they would have paid for the city council because they know it will bring customers into their store. So we have, we are, they, are, they have come in and they're shaping our business and some of them are paying enough basically to keep us running for the, for the rest of the year without okay. struggling. Okay, so those yeah. are like pre-sales. Yeah, so basically, they, they usually have like a month, a month or two months long uh, okay. sale right. when they are clearing all their stock. For example, uh, we have one furniture shop here in Kenya. When they are clearing all their stock, they have this campaign that they do where they are doing discounts of up to 80%. Um, in previous years, they will use billboards to do that. And that will have cost them something like a million Kenyan shillings. Uh, mm-hmm. That is roughly, I think, 80,000 US dollars. Okay. Uh, that, that's what it will have cost them to put up a single billboard. So they are taking what that amount of money and they are choosing to use our platform instead. Mm-hmm. And, and I think yeah. they are reaching, obviously, <clears throat> a more um, targeted, active, right. targeted and active market. Right. Billboards kind of yeah. catch everybody. But you guys are yeah. targeting people who are, who are more likely to take the action that they need, like buy something right. or yeah. refer it or share it with a friend or something like that. That's really cool. So uh, we're coming to the close of this here, Kennedy, and we've got to ask. You're such a sharp guy. You you know you. I mean, you're firing off all these incredible thoughts, and I believe people don't become like that without developing themselves and and pouring into themselves. So can you share with Diamond Nation some of the ways you? help Kennedy become a better Kennedy? What are some of the things you do uh, that that you, you use to develop who you are as a person? So um, here is where I'll mention like uh, my best book ever, uh, and that's The Outlier. The Outlier is, uh, I think, a really amazing book that everybody out there should read. By Malcolm Gladwell? Yes. Yeah, that's a great book. Great yeah. read, yeah. great read. Yeah. Because... 
Yeah, because in there he says, he tries to explain that nothing comes by luck. Everything is through lots of preparation or the environment. The environment is shaping you to do something. Um, the other day, a friend of mine uh, called on me and he asked me, how did I know what I want to do? And I explained to him simply that look around you and you will see. So he's a very good reader. He's way better than me. He sits down with, uh, with whether it's a biography book or a strategy book and reads it in one sitting, right? But I, I, I kept on asking him, but why then do you want to go be an engineer? You have this talent of reading books. Why not help the millions others who cannot read the whole book mm. summarize it? You know, go mm. on to YouTube and discuss this book. YouTube will pay you. Um, and, and so around you, what you've been doing is where your success lies. Um, I'm sure if I took what I'm trying to build and I dropped it in a, in a developed world, I think, like America, uh, it will take <laughs> me longer than it will here in Kenya, right? Right. So because most, most people are not that attached. But here in Kenya, it just works. And I, I think people should, should, think, should put that a lot into perspective. Wow, you said something that was deep. You said, around you, what you're doing is where your success lies. Yes. And can you, so, so <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know, it caught my attention, domination here. So are you speaking in terms of most people are somewhat, the success that they're looking for is usually within their own reach. It's just that they're just not really focused on looking at the right thing. You know, what exactly do you mean by that? Uh, for most people, they believe what what you see. They they look around them and they're like, "Oh, this is just too small for me. Mm. I can't believe that um, I would venture into that." Like one of uh, one one of uh, successful people here in Kenya. His name is um, Karume. His name is Karume. He passed away. The late Karume. Okay. He said um, one time he was having a, he was ha he was at a conference and he was asked, uh, "So, Mr. Karume." How can I become like you? And he was being asked by a guy in a suit. And he looked at him and he told him, you can never be like me. And uh, why that was powerful is because Karume came from being a charcoal seller, right? Mm, mm. Uh, on to becoming one of the richest people here in Kenya. Simply because he leveraged his position. He used to live um, in, an, in an area where the government of the day had segmented for charcoal selling because most people here in Africa had no uh, green energy alternatives. Right. And he started selling charcoal in a one liter uh, kind of can. And from that, he grew. You see, for if he had thought and uh, kept him to himself saying that, oh my God, I'm not a pilot. Mm. Therefore, my, my life is doomed. How can I work it to, to being a pilot? Right. He would have never sold his first one liter of charcoal. Mm. Uh, one liter. Okay, so this, these are, these are uh, I'm using one liter, but these, these are cans of paint. Uh, so it's a can of paint that people recycle and use to sell charcoal. Okay. So he would have never sold his first can. And by him never selling his first can, he would have never been what he became. So, like, what he was telling the guy in suit is that you believe you are too tall to bend down, right? And the people who are too short to stand up, basically they, they are unable to stand up, will beat you at it. Because around them lies all these opportunities. Uh, around you, for example, you in Africa, we have a problem of garbage. If you can start doing recycling, even if it's at the smallest level, then that's an opportunity for you. Um, for me, it was uh, doing up, up development. Right now, very many people call, uh, co when we started, actually, very many people called our idea a very, very small idea. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, because many people try to pressure on Africans the millennium goals. So if you're not solving 
malaria um, malaria related or um, disease re or disease related problems that are affecting Africa or hunger related problems that are affecting Africa, then most most investors won't fund you, and therefore your idea will look really small. Mm, okay, okay. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. So, huh? I never thought about that like that, but that's that's pretty good. So uh, I would like to add guys out there. Um, just look around you and you'll see all these opportunities. Mm. Um, do not get tied down to what, what will get funded. Mm. Just build build into yourself. Look, look into yourself. See what's around you. What is it that you do every day and it makes you happy. Then find a way to make revenue off it. Wow. wow. And that, that will just simply make you happy. Wow. You know... <laughs> Some of your stuff is so good, I don't even know where to go. Okay, let's put it this way. Okay, Diamond Nation, we got your back. Me and Sal got your back. So, Kennedy, before we you, we let you go here, give Diamond Nation, okay, three mm -hmm. practical resources, tools. Like, for example, it could be books. It could be audio tapes. It could be things that can help them get that mindset. Like, for example, to be able to help them look around them and be able to really take that step to find a solution to what they're looking for, where they surround them. Like what are, for example, three books that helped you as you walked or three audio tapes or the resources online or connections or anything like that. Three things that you can really give and uh, Diamond Nation will be able to benefit from that. So uh, three books that I love, three mm. books that I love a lot. Uh, number one, The Outlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll never let go of that. Mm -hmm. Number two, Nail It, Then Scale It. And trust me, you will never need to go out there looking for funding. So learn how to nail it, then scale it. It's okay. by Nathan, Nathan and Paul, I think. And then The Lean Startup. The Lean Startup, Those okay. are the three books, yeah. Okay. Apart from that, um, if you are doing a mobile application, go to fbstart.com, fbstart.com. It's okay. by Facebook, and they provide you so many resources to help your business um, get get through the door basically um get get out there so if you if you're looking for ads ads they'll give you whether you're looking for an adobe suit they'll give you in there so that your business can have at least six months grace period before the you know the real thing hits it uh, the wave <laughs> <laughs> yeah you get a little bit of grace period and then just buckle up for a ride yeah right. yeah, I feel yeah. You. so go to fbstart.com and uh, and they'll sort you out. All right, that's that's, awesome. that's a really good, uh, really really good uh, resource there. You know, guys, check that out. Diamond Nation, check that out. All right, Kennedy, thank you so much for your time. Last question before we let you go to your busy day or evening in Kenya right now. By the way, Diamond Nation, if you didn't know this, we did say this at the top of the interview. But we are on three different continents recording this. Uh, Salem is actually uh, doing several speaking engagements in the UK. I'm in the US. And Kennedy is coming to us from the very continent we're all focused on, Africa. He's in Kenya. So you guys are getting And Obama treat. was here. Yeah, Obama was <laughs> exactly. last week. You know? was so, so we sent you Obama. You brought us. You came to us. You know, we got Kennedy for Obama. Good deal. I'm game for Kennedy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so close very question. Very good timing. Yeah, uh -huh. I know, right? Closing question here. Mm -hmm. What's next for Mobu and what's next for Kennedy? Um, so right now we are talking about expansion. Mobu, Mobu is looking for expansion. Apart from that, um, we are, we've been talking to most merchants. I think we'll be diving now properly into our business model. Uh, they are open to the business model. So we're talking about growth, 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 uh, moving on. So uh, very soon, expect to see Mobu in a phone near you. <laughs> okay, that is awesome. That is awesome. And That's and awesome. for I mean, yeah, I don't think you you spoke about yourself. You said, did you say something about what is next for uh, for Kennedy? So uh, right now, very much Mobu Mobu is Kennedy's Mobu and. Uh, <laughs> Mobu is Kennedy. We are pretty much in step together. Okay. okay. Uh, but um, so I am very much in uh, strategy and methodology development. I'm looking, I'm reading books. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm following um, the best speakers around there. I'm just building myself, preparing myself 
um, so that because I know um, the success of this business is my success in what I read, what I put in myself equals the success of my business. So I'm exactly. pretty much building myself. That's yeah. so true. That's okay. so true. Awesome. And Diamond Nation, you heard it here. Kennedy Nyaga from Mobu, they're doing amazing things on the continent. And what that means for you guys is you can do it too. Africa's most precious resource is listening in right now. You are Africa's most precious resource. Take what you're learning from here. Take Kennedy's story. Be inspired. Go on out there. And as we say, kill something, drag it into the house. You know, go make something happen, guys. So you guys have a great time. We'll be coming to you again next week with another podcast featuring an African change maker. So, Kennedy, thank you so much for your time. We're really excited you could make it. And uh, this is awesome. Amazing. Thank you for coming on, Kennedy. No problem. I am... I am I'm I'm loving what you guys are doing. This is beautiful because we need more stories like this. Awesome. Diamond Nation. We want to make sure that you guys don't miss any podcasts. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. We are even on YouTube. But more importantly, also have our podcast on iTunes and directly from our website. You can go to www.africanpodcast.com. And on all social media, you can look us up at African Podcast. Our Twitter handle, our Instagram handle, our Facebook handle, you can find us there. We hope that you guys stay inspired and you be the change you want to see. Go out there and do something awesome. See you guys.